You've been going on now for some time. Yes, about about five years. Uh, now. Five years now that uh, uh, black women should appreciate their hair and wear their hair and not buy wigs. Why? Um, thank you for this opportunity to explain myself. How this started, Trevor, was I was walking town and I saw our ladies slapping their scalps and scratching and so on. And I observed that other races don't do that. The whites don't do that. The Chinese don't do that. The Indians don't do that. So I asked the girls in my office, what is it? What is happening? And they said, oh, doctor, it's the weaves. They're itchy. I said, okay, educate me. What are these weaves? They said, well, there's 100% human hair, uh, which is Indian, Brazilian, Peruvian, etc., which is quite expensive. And then there's the cheaper stuff, the synthetic fibers made by the Chinese and the Koreans. Now, I traveled to all these countries several times, you know, Korea, uh, China, uh, India, Brazil. So when I was in India, that's when I discovered that if we are family and we lose a member of the family, all the ladies in the family go to the temple where they worship and they have all their hair shaven off. That hair is a sacrifice to their gods. What hit me personally was I saw those homeless, very poor people, their hair was being shaved off. I saw people I thought were sickly, maybe they had TB or something, their hair was being shaven off. Then, I don't know, some people maybe had sores on their, their scalp because as they were being shaven off, they were bleeding. So I, I said to myself, what is this? How did we, black people, end up in this space where we buy this, we actually pay US dollars for this? Now, to make it worse, <clears throat> when the hair is, is, is cut off, it, it falls on the floor. Mm. Then you get people, you know, putting little hips and so on. And then they were sorting it out. They were removing worms. They were removing lice. That day, I said to myself, no, there's something not right with us paying for this. Now, I was flying back, and, 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 and I was on Emirates, and this thing was playing on my mind. I said, you know, when I grew up, when we grew up, there were no waves. So how did this start? Mm -hmm. Who started it? And who told the black lady that you're not beautiful? Mm -hmm. To be more beautiful, you must wear this thing. Mm -hmm. I said, well, if, you, if we go to a restaurant and, and, and we have uh, expensive food and we're eating the food, we find human hair in there, you know, we won't take it. It's contaminated. Mm -hmm. and, and if you and I go to, to Nyeri's mother and said, oh, Mama Zara, we're here. We'd like to shave each other's hair. Can we do it in your kitchen? Mm -hmm. She would say, oh, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Because hair once shaved off is dirt. Mm -hmm. You throw it away. Mm -hmm. So gentlemen, do it outside and don't bring the hair into my house. But people would say, uh, Solomon, that um, this hair gets washed. Yeah. You know, there's a process, a manufacturing process that's done. It gets cleaned, pegged, pegged nicely and so forth. D does your point still stand? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. I was speaking to a trichologist, somebody specializing, he's got a doctor um, in, in, in hair and so on. Mm -hmm. Hair does not die. It's alive. Okay. So somebody commits a crime here and they leave a piece of hair. Even 25 years later, we can catch them because of DNA uh -huh. in the hair. And the trichologists tell us that if hair is in touch with another tissue, there's exchange of genetic material. Yeah. People don't know this. Which means people who are gluing the hair or whatever, stitching, whatever, there's exchange of genetic material. They don't know what they're getting. It may not show in that individual, but in grandchildren, great grandchildren. Yeah. Trevor, there are three sources of this hair, live people, mm -hmm. dead people, mm -hmm. and of course these fibers. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a patient, um, uh, Mr. Makuni. Ma Mr. Makuni possesses a, a, a company called Steel Force in Waterfalls. He, he, we talk about this openly, and he doesn't mind me mentioning his name. Sure. So he was in Taiwan on business. So mm -hmm. he says, I get there, then I find that ladies who die in Taiwan, some of them anyway, just before burial, the hair is shaved off. Mm -hmm. Then they immediately get buried. Mm -hmm. So he says, um, they showed me a warehouse, huge warehouse, full of that hair, from here to over there. And he said to them, gentlemen, what are you doing with all this hair of people who've just been buried? Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, black people. Mm -hmm. Black people love this hair. This is big business, my friend. We are making tons of money. 
billions of money in fat selling mostly to black people who are our biggest market. He says I just to them that, wow. Now, let's just think, think of it for a moment, mm. uh, Trevor. <clears throat> a lady comes in here. She has this hair. Because if you ask ladies with the expensive hair, the natural hair, if you say to them, is this hair from a dead person or a live person? They don't know. Mm. Now, this hair, it will fall off in here, in the bathroom, in the kitchen, and so on. This dead people's hair, we don't know what those people died of. Mm. We don't know what disease was running in their family. We just buy. And remember, Trevor, it's not just about hair. It's about hair and skin. That's our issue. These are our issues. Now, the synthetic, but some say, oh, it's synthetic. To me, it's even worse, and I'll tell you why. What our people don't realize is this. Our skin and our hair, they need to breathe. Mm -hmm. Caucasians, white people, have that kind of hair and that kind of skin because they come from a cold climate, minus 10, minus 20 degrees Celsius. They snow. So that hair and that skin is an adaptation to their habitat, to their environment. So that's why when white people come to this part of the world, because of the sun, mm. they get skin cancers mm. because they don't have pigment. This pigment is worth more than gold. And that, that is why albinos also get skin cancers because they have no pigment. That's why people have applied ambi also get you know, damage, permanent damage to the skin. Mm. So we buy this so weaves or wigs, whatever, and put them on top of our own hair. Now, it means the scalp cannot breathe. Some people keep this for four weeks or even longer. What's happening? I said to the ladies, do you know, you get the hair on your scalp, your armpits, your private parts. Mm -hmm. Wherever there's hair, there's sweating. Mm. Could we go for three days or one week without washing your armpits in your private parts? No, you can't. Mm. When we keep sweat for just for two days, we start smelling. Mm. Now, imagine the smell after two days. How does that sweat smell after four weeks. Mm. Well, what, what about the fact that the white people also wear wigs, don't they? Well, it's interesting because, you know, I've got some white people I work with and some of our enterprises, and they ask them. And normally when you see white people wearing wigs, they either they've got problems with their scalp, alopecia, or they're on chemotherapy, mm -hmm. or they're in a pantomime or some circus or something. Mm. Very few of them actually wear to dress up. Very few. I talk to them and they, and they don't do it. Mm. They don't do it. Our ladies actually wear these wigs to look beautiful. They think they look beautiful. Now, you know when they go for four weeks, this sweat, four week old sweat, mm. plus dandruff. And because of that, you get bacteria. Because the bacteria love this environment. It's hot, it's, 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 it's wet. The bacteria get fat, fitting on the four week old sweat, four week old dandruff. And they multiply like crazy. I can tell you now, Trevor, all these ladies that we see, mm -hmm. they have millions, billions, trillions, zillions of bacteria on their scalp. And these bacteria then chew on the scalp and it's itchy, they go. Each time they're doing this, they're touching four week old sweat, dandruff and bacteria. And you know, they don't wash their hands. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're in a combi or in a bus, they just kill them. they're touching plates and all this and all that. I, I find it sad. You know, I want to make it very clear, because ladies think, well, you can't tell us what to do. Please, I'm not telling anyone what to do. I don't have the power or the authority, even the interest or desire to tell people what to do. Do whatever you want. You, you, you want to wear the weave, wig, weave, whatever. You want to bleach your skin, go ahead and do it. I'm just trying to share this information. And there's another point, Trevor. Um, the effect on the black child. I was, um, I was invited as a guest speaker at um, NASH, National Association of Secondary School Headmasters in Trollbeck in 2015. And I said to the headmasters, you know, and headmistresses, you have an awesome responsibility to instill confidence in the black child. The black child must know there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with your hair. There's nothing wrong with your skin. God did not make a mistake on you. In fact, they give you the best hair, the best skin. And it was embarrassing, I was at the podium, and all the hierarchy, the headmistresses, had weaves on, and the rest of them had weaves or wigs on. I said to myself, Solomon, what do you do? I said, well, I just go ahead. And my point was, I said to them, 
we have head mistresses here who are teachers, who are mothers. Now, you're in education, you know more than I do, that every little child looks up to the mother, looks up to the teacher, looks up to the headmistress. The child has hair like mine, but mom has a weave, teacher has a weave, headmistress has a weave. The child in her own mind says, but how come my hair is not like my mom's hair, or my teacher's hair, or my headmistress is here. It means there must be something wrong with me. So these people say this, we have to think about this, about the black child. Because by doing this, we may not be aware of it, but we're inflicting untold psychological damage on the black child. Well, the child of the, the, the white child or the Japanese child grows up, they're confident. They don't worry about the hair, their skin. They think of development, innovation. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, oh, the hair is not right. Mm -hmm.